This is a case of a refractive lens exchange with the crystal lens. The patient is a minus four myope with about one and a quarter diopters of astigmatism at axis 30. So we go ahead and correct the her astigmatism first. We have already pre-marked the eye at three and nine o'clock while the patient was sitting upright. Then we laid them down and prepped them and draped them. And now we are lining up our little axis marker at 3 and 9 o'clock, and we make a mark at the 30 degree axis. Everything is done with probable anesthetic. She's received 10 milligrams of Valium. She's very comfortable. And then I take a caliper and I mark it off at 4 millimeters in diameter. I'm going to do a 4 millimeter nimble relaxing incision axis 30 and I'm going to operate on the stoop axis for my keratin incision. So we're going to place a crystal lens because the patient's desire is to have good far vision and good computer vision and we do not want unwanted nighttime visual artifacts such as halos and they're willing to wear reading glasses. This is topical anesthetic. I'm going to create my four millimeter limbo relax relaxing incision going to grasp the conjunctiva and then I'm going to incise the cornea but I'm going to use the 0.12 forceps as counter traction so the eye does not rotate away from me or torque while I'm making my incision. I usually make one pass and then I double check it. So that patient had 1% lidocaine topical only. I usually do not use intraocular lidocaine as 99% of the time when I use intraocular lidocaine, the patient yields. Now for all crystal lens procedures, I want the incision watertight. So I do still on all crystal lenses make a conjunctival peritomy and I enter through the sclera. Just feel like this gives me a greater chance of having a stable anterior chamber in the first 24 hours because I do not want the crystal lens vaulting forward due to decreased intraocular pr pressure from uh, a wound leak. So I augment my anesthetic effect and then I'll moisten the cornea with Ocucode, which uh, also enhances visualization of the structures in the eye. I fill the eye with Ocucote and then I use that cannula to stabilize the eye and then I enter into the eye through the sclera with a 2.8 millimeter keratone blade. So my expectation is this 2.8 millimeter entry combined with my 4 millimeter limbal relaxing incision will reduce this patient's 1.25 diopters of astigmatism at axis 30. So she'll have a destigmatically neutral refraction at the end of the day. I still use a bent needle cystitome to create my capsulorexis. I want to keep my capsulorexis at about 5 millimeters or maybe just a little bit smaller than the edge of the crystal lens optic, which is five millimeters. So I inflate the eye with Ocucote. The Ocucote syringe is attached to the bent needle cystitome. And then I just take my time and create a nice round capsulorexis. My vein capsulorexis with uh, incisors small, impasse, small as four, as wide as eight or nine millimeters, and the hernia tends to keep the capsulorexis of the about the same size as the optic of the crystal lens, which is five millimeters. I'm using the crystal lens AO, which is the latest version of the crystal lens as of the time of this video and surgery, which is May 2nd of 2011. I'm able to make a controlled, nice, round capsulorexis. 
the file system. And then I do I do the section. I will edit a lot of the FACO and IA out of the video because those are standard techniques that most ophthalmologists are very familiar with. We use the AMO signature FACO emulsification system with an ellipse FX matrix. So here I've already emulsified the nucleus and I'm going to begin IA irrigation and aspiration. And there are some little pearls that I'll show for my INA technique. First of all, in order to enhance the stability of the nuclear chamber, I'm going to stromohydrate my peritoneal system with an incision so it's less likely to leak. And so I'll have a more stable anterior chamber. I'll tell the patient, you're going to get fluid and pressure, be as steady as you can. Usually the pressure may startle them. Here they have a little reverse pupillary block, which I actually like because it enhances my visualization of the uh, equator of the anterior cap of the, um, of the capsular bag. I use a silicone tip IA made by MSD Microsurgical. do the normal irrigation and aspiration, but then I get very convulsive. I find that all steps are in crystal nitrous. Uh, cataract surgery, all steps tend to be done with a higher tolerance. So the Travis Direct is a little more round, a little more meticulous in my cortical cleanup. Here I'm spending time removing the lens epithelium itself from the posterior aspect of the anterior capsule here. salt solution attached to a, a bottle and I'm just hydrating my cornea and my surgical technician is getting things ready and um, it becomes more efficient when she's not tied up holding the uh, bottle and just managing the cornea. And that will keep people from getting two things done at one time and overall there's better flow in the operating room. So I've taken out the uh, cortical remnants and here's my insertion technique. I use the crystal lens inserter. I align the haptic such that the round haptic is to the right and make sure the haptics are in the middle channel and not poking out the edge of the insertion. I visualize the insertion into the cartridge. I'll use a smooth 0.1246 to, to stabilize the eye. It stabilizes and prevents egress of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. I filled the eye with Ocucode at this point. So there's Ocucode used throughout the procedure even though the viscoelastic is used. And I generally only need one it's a 1 ml syringe of Octocode. I'm making sure that the right haptic is round, the left haptic is oval, and the surgical vision cup is to the capsular bag. If I'm fortunate, the trailing haptics will also go into the capsular bag. In this case, that does not occur. So now I'm in a situation where the leading haptics are in the bag, the trailing haptics are not in the bag with Ocucode in hand, so now I'm going to use my silicone tip IA, more point point one two, and I'm going to use the tip to nudge one haptic, one trailing haptic, both behind the anterior capsule vision, and then I'll just rotate the lens counterclockwise to let the trailing remaining haptic go into the bag. There's a top haptic, bag and now we're pretty much home free. Now my goal is to remove the remaining vis
this for last and and to rotate the lens around to make sure that there's no residual portent hanging out from the base of the bag. And I'm also visualizing the best position for the crystal lens to be such that the anterior capsule margin is just at the edge of the optic. So I'm usually rotating the crystal lens clockwise or counterclockwise two to four revolutions to determine the best resting position for the lens. I'll also place my finding tip behind the crystal lens optic to remove any residual vortex which may proliferate in the posterior capsule or magnification. And I'm looking for position between 3 and 9 o'clock, which is not quite as good as 12 and 6 o'clock for the alignment. So I'm rotating to 12 and 6 o'clock. I'll try and get rid of any teeny tiny little cortical fragments. And I'll stromal nitrate my piercing to number four. I double check the position of the eye. Well, I rock the lens back and forth. Just to make sure these haptics settle at the equator of the bag and that they don't um, grab the bag prematurely and create the potential future seizure wise. The position of the optic is good, posterior vault is good. Now I'm going to make sure that we have a bone dry incision. So I'll fully pressurize the eye. Budget to triple check each incision to make sure there's absolutely no leak for the bone pressure. I want it bone dry. Usually I spend more time on cataract surgery with a crystal lens than all the other implants because it just requires more manipulative procedure to get a better result. There the piercing releases the bone dry. If there were a leak, I usually create a long incision to make things more rigid, long and intrusive. So the stromal hydrate above my incisions. Here I'll hydrate my AK incision to make sure I get a good effect and wash out any epithelial cells. We're basically all done. We have a great pressure great position 